Healthy eating is now the name of the game at schools across the country. But at Heathside School, a foundation technical college, they're piloting a new approach to help them meet the nutrient-based standards for school lunches. This becomes law in primary schools in England in September 2008 and in secondary schools in September 2009. When I first started doing this pilot, I was just conscious of the, the healthy food, so I used to think, well, having a salad was the right sort of thing. But I think we're aware now that you can have a salad, but that's not necessarily healthy. It's, it's what you have with it, the whole balance of the diet. And I think that's trying to put that over to the students is quite um, a new thing we're trying to do. Um, have you guys got any suggestions for, for sort of new ideas we could do, things that you want to see that maybe aren't there at the moment? The school's healthy eating group is the main vehicle for ensuring the school's management and pupils have a two-way conversation about healthy eating. It's a case of listening as well as explaining, and these students are heavily involved in developing the menus on offer. When you try new foods and foods from different countries, it's, it's an experience as well. People think, well, yeah, I do want to try that. So, I, yeah, they're, they're a really good idea. I think we should keep them. Here they're working with the school chef in designing recipes and then they actively promote their meals in places like the school assembly. We believe there's a real opportunity to develop the healthy eating campaign by involving your whole community. We do it with our students and engaging the students to feel they can make the difference. The students make sure that their fellow pupils are aware of what's going on. Well, they've already started to buy more main meals and eat healthier options. My friends are thinking that we're doing a good job, I think, and they're suggesting good ideas, and I've put a few of their ideas forward. And they've been taken up? Uh, yes, like some of the soups and things and flavours of pastas, and we've changed that. It gives us an opportunity to say what we want, what our friends mm. want, and we are really getting listened to. You just need to walk into the canteen and you see that the new ideas are being put in and you know that we really are making a difference. I think the good thing about doing this sort of thing is that it involves the students. Um, we found that in the school things will change if we uh, students actually participate in all the things we're doing. True and they'll tell you that you also need the support of the whole school, staff and catering suppliers, as well as students and their parents to make improvements stick. For other schools uh, in doing this, I think the critical thing is whether you, um, the senior management are working with the caterers and with the students, working together um, and having a conversation and listening to each other. Yeah, on the menu today we've got uh, stir-fry curry, um, we've got Thai green curry which is going to be cooked live by one of our executive chefs. Um, we like to kind of do live cooking and theme days, um, especially during these trials, to keep the kids interested, um, show them some exotic recipes and foods that they may not have tried before. But with the, um, the introduction of the food group, it's been a great help to me as a, as a cook and a catering manager to be able to um, gauge their opinions and, and hear their ideas for some ingredients they might like to see or some individual products that we might be able to try to help them enjoy their meals more. Well, what are you having? Um, Thai green curry and some sweet chilli noodles and vegetables. What do you think of it? Really, really good. If you know what's going into your food at school, then you can cheat as you would at home. So it's not like you don't know what you're about to eat and you know that you're getting the right amount of nutrients and everything. So it's not just healthy food, it's a balanced diet. For example, in this otherwise healthy food school, this pilot found that the average school lunch was low in nutrients and minerals like calcium and iron because they weren't really aware of which foods had these minerals. I didn't really realise how much salt we were eating and that's quite an important thing to try and get down. The reason why we fry it and this is the message that runs right through the school curriculum. This is a year nine class and we do an awful lot of cooking from basics, cooking from scratch. So we're encouraging the students to choose their own vegetables, choose their own meats, making sure they have a good balanced diet. That's really important in the curriculum. Uh, the lessons that we've been having it, it, uh, shows us what nutrition are in these uh, vegetables and the mints as well. So it's a good, uh, healthy meal. In theory, the, the meat that we use has got a lot of fat in it, but what I encourage the students to do is to drain the fat at the beginning of the lesson. They cook the mince and then they drain the fat, and we drain the fat into one bowl like this, and then we can actually see at the end of the lesson just how much saturated fat has come out of the mince.
all good positive messages. Although at mealtimes, price, convenience and a lingering taste for unhealthy foods are still challenges all schools have to meet. With the nutrient standards coming into force in September 2009, it's important that all secondary schools start working towards these now. Heathside and its catering company, Scholarist, have discovered that the way the meals are marketed can help them ensure they are meeting the nutrient-based standards for school lunches. We've really been trying to promote meal deals um, in accordance with the nutrient standards. So the nutrients that have been lacking, we've been trying to choose particular foods and match those up um, and offer those to the children as, as an actual meal deal, focusing on foods that we know that the children like to eat, so not necessarily the meal of the day, the sort of the meat and two veg type meal. We've been looking at um, pasta options as well and, and pizzas, but offering that with a salad and trying to complement the foods that they like, but to try and make it an overall balance. This is not a quick fix. This takes time. And to really be serious about developing a healthy community where healthy eating is at the centre, we really feel that you have to be able to invest time and trust the students with the catering team to work together over a period of time to come up with the way forward. So there's no doubt that meeting the nutrient standards will be a big challenge. But as Heathside and Scholarist are finding, getting students involved, allowing them to participate and to help develop the food on offer will mean that the people who are championing more nutritious food are the very ones who are eating it.